I wanted to. Hey, everyone, welcome. Hey. Uh, <laughs> I just I surprised myself. Yes. Oh, we're live. <laughs> hey, everyone. welcome to Wind Down. It's welcome Friday. To wind Down. It's Friday. And what a week it has been. Yes, it has been quite the week, although it flew by. To me, this week went by really fast. And it I don't know why. Well, I think I know why. Because Monday was kind of an off day because Kirk was here. And then he left Tuesday morning. So it was like a short week for me. And we were up north. So it, it, it flew by in a way that was great. And then all of a sudden you wake up and you go, oh, it's over. It's over. Yeah, Friday. It's already Friday. Yeah. Spring break is over. It's time to go home. But we had a great time. It it snowed almost every day and there is a like lovely if you like snow. There was that lovely fluffy white stuff. Um uh you know every day and uh our daughter's away so we didn't see her but our son was up and uh it was lovely family time. Lovely That's lovely family time. Happy Friday, Bob. Great to see you in the house. Hey, Bob, of course. Hopefully, Bob is in the house. Gamrocks that Be Live has given us to decorate our screen here on Be Live. <laughs> um, there's some really new fun features. So someone asked last week after our show, how are we making the comments come up? And it's kind of cool because you can do um, like right now. Welcome to Wind Down, and it scrolls like a ticker tape across the bottom. Sorry, sorry. What happened? That, that was me. Oh, Never I, didn't mind. Even, I didn't even hear. Yeah. Um, and I was I was very smart today, and I hardwired in, and then I, I haven't switched from Wi-Fi to that network, so it's kind of too late. Hello, happy <laughs> Friday, Sarah and Elaine. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. That's, um, yeah, the... the um, Fun things that be live. So be live is a third party tool that we're using on Facebook Live and it so it still records on Facebook and then be live allows us to do kind of these call to actions and fun things, um, agendas and um, schedule them ahead of time, which is really helpful. So I love it. Love I, it. Um, I actually saw something this week uh, from somebody who, who used be live. Um, and I'm not quite sure whether they were using it on their phone or whatever, but um, the the frame was off. <laughs> were they was, sideways? Yes, they were sideways. And I've so um, it, it, it reminded me that that should be on everybody's checklist. If you're using Facebook Live, make sure yeah. you're not sideways. Yeah, and, and sometimes you think that you're on correctly, and then if you look on your, usually I look on my phone, if it's the first time you're using a tool, to see how does it look to everyone else. <laughs> yes, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good okay. idea, to see how it looks to everybody else. Or have awesome people in your audience, like Bob and Sarah and Ellen, who will tell you if, okay, your sound is off, because that's so helpful, you know, sometimes when you think everything's working, and then... You find out yeah. later. I've used the headset for the last this week and last week. So um, I think all everybody who's listening that I can see has has heard the show before. If somebody can just tell me if the uh, headset is correcting the echo problem, I don't hear the echo on my end anymore. I think the headset has has fixed that. But Gina, you never used to hear it anyway, so you can't tell me if it's no, fixed. I know it's kind I of know. like telling people, yeah, you look great. When I don't have my glasses on because I'm yeah, blind. Yeah. So, but Ellen, Ellen, and Bob, I know you've both noticed the echo before. So um, um, you, maybe you can just put a little comment in there, which I can't see, but Gina can see. I can and see say, it. Say if the echo has been fixed. But but this week, um, I'm really excited about our our topic, uh, Gina. We're going to be talking about community community community. community. <laughs> Thanks, Is Bob. Community and community yeah. together. Intimacy and community together, and I think we've just innovated a new word: community, yeah. community, 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 community. for today, or <laughs> intimate, intimacy. I, I don't know, so, something like that. But um, and Gina, you were talking about this app, which I just, I'm so curious. I didn't want to ask you about it before the show because okay. yeah. I knew you were to talk about it. So tell us all about this. Um, this app, which I just think is so cool. Okay, it's super cool. And we talked about it last night when my friends here, Polina and Tonya and, and Max, Max and Andrew, when they all got in last night, we were talking about this app. 
So it's called 36 Questions, and it actually was a study that was done, and it was, can you create intimacy with a total stranger, and intimacy meaning a close friendship? Um, you know, could you really get to know someone on an intimate level by asking a series of questions and in one city? And so they did this study, they brought people together, and they found out that indeed, not only were friendships made, but there were several couples that came oh. together and actually got married um, several months later. So I downloaded the app, and actually I learned about the app in the book that I talked about last week, the book that I read called The Power of Moments, which I highly recommend. It's such a good book. In that book, they talked about this app, 36 Questions. So, I, of course, I download apps right away and check them out. So I made my husband, I made Kirk sit down with me this week, and we had to go through asking each other the 36 questions, which he thought – some of them were ridiculous because he said, okay, we've been married 28 years. Of course I know this about you. But I still made him do all 36 questions. And it was just interesting because the questions allow you to get to know people. And I actually um, I made a, I made a decision that I'm going to use some form of this. And I went through the questions and even picked out one of them for my letter that I'm calling my love letter to my um mailing list. I hate, you know, newsletters. Tony, you and I have talked about this. Newsletters is just such a, like, nobody wants more news. Um, so I, I'm writing a weekly love letter to my community. And in that, I'm trying to find ways, how do we get to know our community on a different level? Because like you're going to talk about, we tend to want people to know us and our brand, but how do we turn the tables and get to know our audience and our community right. go beyond right. just follow my stuff. Yes. And so um, Bob says 36 questions. Oh, interesting. Bob says he saw that this was written up in psychology today. Yeah. It's, it, it has been used uh, in many levels, business and all kinds of psychology studies and at these universities. And um, it's a fun, I wouldn't say it's a fun party game. It's a fun exercise to do with, a person that you want to get to know better or if you just want to torture your spouse like I did. Okay. That was great. Is there, any, <laughs> is there any potential application, Gina, for using this with a version of some kind of this with, with clients? Well, definitely when you go through the questions, you'll see that some of them are great questions that you could ask. Like I would pull out a few Right. And maybe use them like if you were at lunch with a client or if you have clients staying with you for the for the weekend, um, you know, you I think it's a, just a great way to get to know people on a deeper level. Right. And um, and it's interesting that they did this study with total strangers coming together and just asking the series of questions because it's just things that we usually get to know about people over a long period of time. And what they tried to figure out is. Is it that it's the long period of time that builds the relationship or is it that we can expedite this? And I had a conversation with um, a man uh, maybe three weeks ago and he was telling me he didn't kind of skeptical like you were about social media. He said, I just don't see that social media will help me because my sales cycle is so long. And I said, right. okay, interesting. What happened? He told me his sales cycle was one to three years before he would close a, a sale. And I said, um, so what happens in that one to three years that suddenly makes somebody convert and and buy from you or hire you? And he says, well, it takes them time to get to know me or to trust who I am and what I can deliver. And I said, so if social media could allow you to yes. build those relationships faster, would that be valuable? Well, of course it would. And that's where I think these 36 questions, however, um, like last week I gave a homework assignment in my email newsletter, love letter, that I just said you had to go walk around, walk about is what I call it, and and comment on other people's stuff and not just your stuff. I think I would like to pick like five people in my social community and ask a couple of these questions. So yes, I think you could apply. I think you could apply them to build that relationship quicker if your sales cycle, especially if it's really long. Yeah, and I think there's that the whole power of asking questions, right? Which which we all know, we say that we know, right. but um, I'm, I'm still not sure. 
that we do it enough or um, we ask questions that are more self-serving. In other words, uh, we, you know, we want to know the answer so that it will help us. Um, I think, Gina, you've heard me do this when I when I run into somebody I haven't seen or even if I have seen them recently. Um, my favorite question to ask is what's going on in your life right now that you're the most excited about? And and I, I, I think the beauty of that question is, first of all, people don't expect it. And second right. of all, they really do go to a place in their brain um, where they go, okay, what am I? And I specifically don't say in your business or in your home life. I just say in your life right now. And I found out the coolest things about people uh, just by asking that very different question. So I, I think there's a huge power of, you know, you said you read a book called The Power of Moments. Well, there's a, the power of questions. And I think this is great. Yeah. I'm going to go check it out. I think it's just an interesting way for us to think about how do we go to that deeper level, getting to know people on a more intimate level, friendship level. And I don't, I don't know if friendship is always our goal, depending on what your business is. But I, I just feel like sometimes things stay at such a superficial, Hey, here's all my great stuff. I hope you love it. I hope you love me and um, I'll move on. And it's yes. like, okay, what if we turn the tables and we had to get to know someone else years ago in my training days, we used to do an exercise where we would form circles and you had to look at a person and then find as many things as possible that you had different from them. And then after you did that with everybody in the, your circle, then you had to go the other way and you had to look at the person and find everything you had in common. What was interesting is to find things that are different. I don't even have to talk to you. I can look at you. I can say, oh, you wear glasses. I don't. You, you're black. I'm white. You're this. I'm that. You're tall. I'm short. Um, but to find things we had in common, we had to talk to one another. And I think that's another place where we are, not even in business, but in society of just, you know, we're so overstimulated with technology that we don't slow down enough to get to know people um, right. on a deeper level. Right. So right. And I think it's a good, a, a good exercise for all of us to do. Yeah, and I'm sure there would be people who would say, particularly those who have larger businesses, you know, I don't have time and it's it's physically impossible for me to get to know all of my customers. But I think, uh, and that may well be true if you're serving hundreds of thousands of people, but I still think that you have a core group of customers, the ones that are your 20%. And that everything you can do to get to know those people better can't help but uh, can't help but serve you and your business and and the the bonds that you can create with with those people. Right, and so you probably have things that might I don't know. I mean, the whole thing of building community, which is what you know, we kind of initially were looking at this from a slightly different angle of we're we're craving that. And I mean, since social media has been around, everyone's talked about tribes. And did you found an article about this? Yeah, I found several things this week because I. Um, you and I have been talking, and I think even last week about doing uh, something on community. And um, when I when I think of tribes, I always think of Seth Godin and, and his book about the tribe. And and you know, for years we've talked about, and even from a social media point of view, we've talked about building community from a very brand centric point of view. And I guess what I mean by that is there's always been this advice out there um, that social media helps you build a community, and that. And building that community is good for you. It's good for you right. as a brand. It's good for your business. So it's very brand centric. But I, I went looking for um, stuff on community this week and on innovative approaches to community and found some fascinating uh, statistics, which I which really just blew my mind. And, and since my memory is never good at the best of times, especially not on a spring break week, I'm actually going to read it. But uh, IBM, um, IBM IX went out and they did this study and they discovered that there is a crisis of growing isolation and social anxiety. And if you think about it, it is so fascinating, given that we live in a world where we are more connected, particularly via social media, than we have ever, ever, ever been. And so right. everybody thinks because we're all connected that we are actually connected. Well, we're not. Oh, there are there are people feeling incredibly isolated. And in fact, Britain just appointed a minister of loneliness. The country of Britain, the prime minister appointed a minister of loneliness. Airbnb and Starbucks have explicitly made, explicitly made belonging 
part of their um, of their brand purpose. And that and and people are craving this feeling of being connected. And so it, in our work and all of our focus on experiences, that's what people do. But I think that's what experiences do. They bring people together. But I think there's this shift. There's this shift from building a community because it's good for my brand and building a community because it's good for people yeah. to feel I, like they belong to something. And there's a, a 39% of, uh, of brand imperatives that matter most. 39% of brand imperatives that matter most to consumers and improve business performance are collective by nature. And, and they have rituals. They have shared values. Uh, I remember taking a, a course uh, or a, a breakout session at the CAPS convention in December on masterminds. And the brilliant young woman who delivered the, the, the session talking about how the most successful masterminds are people who are brought together, not just because they have similar interests and similar businesses and similar levels of whatever, but because they share a common purpose. And, and there's this phrase out there right now that we are all busy being alone together. And, and that, that for me is so profound. We are busy being alone together. And the fact that we reach out, that we like, that we, if we don't, if we aren't engaging in conversations, I don't think we are building community. And, and that goes back to your questions piece. Um, there are brands out there. There's some great things I found this week, like, uh, Beauty Rest, the mattress people. Um, hold on. Just let me. All the people together to sleep. On their mattresses. Well, this is this is what they did. Oh, that's they, not their slogan. It is. It, it was is. not their slogan, but it's what they did. Like, listen to this. They created an eight-hour music performance. That would be cool. Except that there were mattresses everywhere. Now, don't get ahead of me and don't get get <laughs> dirty, but. But um, you were able to, to lie down on this mattress for eight hours and listen to this phenomenal music beside a complete stranger and sexual connotations put, put to the side. What better way to get to know someone than just hanging out? So it was great for the brand, but it was completely brand congruent. And it created this sense of I have had this experience, you With have had this experience, yeah. and therefore we together are part of this group that has had this unique experience. And I just thought not only was it innovative and, and, and brilliantly on brand, but how are we creating those experiences, not necessarily with mattresses, uh, <laughs> for our well, customers? And I don't see Jim here in the audience, but like what Jim's company does, you know, taking Absolutely. people on these adventures. I look at it and go, when we climbed Kilimanjaro, the people that we were with for a week, sleeping in tents, we weren't together in tents, but we, you know, you're doing all this stuff together for, for a week you got to know them and we've stayed in touch with them and you know you become you form these friendships so i don't know you know how else now i say i don't know how else you can do that but it's interesting i came across a couple um i have to give a shout out because brian and lisa mcneil they do a facebook live every single morning five days a week and um i don't know if i talked about them last week or not i i don't know that i did I I think I did on my on my uh, Monday Q and A that I do in DIY Social, but um, Brian and Lisa go live every single day, and I happened upon them on their Facebook Live show, and I just tuned in. Their topics were interesting, yeah. and what was interesting is they were talking specifically, calling out people in the stream. They were they knew things about these people. They were asking them questions like, "Hey, how did it go with this? Um, the, you know, your coaching session." But even more interesting was. An hour before their show goes live, it may be 30 minutes before their show goes live, Lisa does this thing called morning meditation and makeup. Every single day before she goes live on their show, she goes in her bathroom to get ready and she puts her iPad up on the mirror and she puts some cool filters on. I literally, when I saw it, I was like, okay, wait a minute. What is she doing? She's actually putting makeup on and singing and talking and saying good morning to people. And at first I just thought, okay, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Then I was like, who's tuning in for this? And then my brain went, wait a minute. She makes this feel like we get to sneak in the ladies room and because yes. and a guy popped on the screen saying good morning and she says, hey, 
so and so's here, but this is ladies only time or something. And I thought, oh my gosh, she has created this intimate relationship with her audience that they come in before her live show with her husband and you're watching her get ready as she's saying good morning to you listening to music and I just was fascinated by that I just thought wow she has this intimacy with her audience she knows them they know her um, and does it every morning everything they, they said they've never missed a morning sometimes she'll be on without him sometimes he'll be on without her but every morning they go live and I, that's so cool how can we as a brand learn from that you know do we have conversations where we get to know our audience that that at that level I don't know that I'd want to bring them in my bathroom with me but maybe no, Tony you and I have been in pajamas together on Facebook like that we have See, that got yeah. that close. And and we will most certainly be again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and pajamas and no makeup. <laughs> yeah. So That's we we were with no makeup. Yeah. We didn't need so, the whole bathroom thing because uh, there was no hair and makeup for those I shows. I thought that was interesting that every day they have, they form an experience, even though it's not sharing a mattress or sharing an experience face to face, they created this place where people feel intimate. But what's the what's the brand? Like, what are they? The, um, she is the coach's coach, so she works okay. with coaches, and then he is a sales um, trainer, a sales speaker, okay. and both okay. of them do speaking and training and consulting. So, you know, is it self serving? They're building this community that could hire them. Absolutely, people. I know people were feeling. And I was feeling it like I belong, like I, I had the right to be in her bathroom with her, watching her put the filters on. It was just interesting, um, a, a good psychology study in, yeah. in uh, building community. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and all about, again, going back to this word belonging and that we want people to feel like they belong with each other. In that article, they talk about... Uh, shared values, but they also talk about rituals. Well, what you're describing is the morning ritual. Morning uh, ritual. Because the, it's the morning ritual. Uh, again, I'm not so sure I would want anybody in my bathroom with me, um, but I'm not so sure that that would, uh, that would, would serve my brand story either. But, yeah, uh, but it obviously brand. serves hers and it, and it needs to be whatever our, our Facebook book groups or anybody's Facebook group serves that purpose if it's a good Facebook group where we're asking questions and, and creating conversations and, and finding out more about people. So I guess the question is for, for people listening, whether you're listening to the show or listening to the recording, is how can you do that? How can you create collective experiences that people then, you know, one of the things I love to, to talk about, and I know Volkswagen isn't the, the brand to talk about these days, but you can't take away from them some of the amazing things that they've done because of the things that they've also done. But right. um, I think a lot of people know that, um, that uh, thing they did in Amsterdam with the piano stairs, right? Where they had, there was the escalator, right? And then they had, they turned the stairs into a piano to get more people to take the stairs. And 66% more people took the stairs. But what was also phenomenal was the community that got created, the sense of belonging when you could see it, when people looked at each other and talked to each other. It's like, yeah, we're, we're, we're taking, we're taking the stairs. Like yeah, we're now we're now part of this collective experience of people that got it enough uh, to take the stairs, and right. and it's how do you create most of the Molson Canadian beer fridge? I don't know if people know about that, where you had to put in your Canadian passport. Do you, do you know? Do you know this story? No. Oh, okay. this was this was funny. This is a few years ago, but they've done it several yeah. times since. Where they, yeah, Molson Canadian, and they put this beer fridge up, and you could get a free beer as long as you put your Canadian passport in. And then it took off. There were these Molson Canadian beer fridges all over the world, all over the world. Sometimes you had to sing the Canadian national anthem to get the fridge to unlock, and you got a free beer. But all of this because I it was a collective. A make a Canadian yeah. friend and bring them over to the fridge. Yes. <laughs> But then you become part of this select group, right? It's a collective experience. You 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 shared a ritual, and the ritual is 
singing the Canadian anthem or putting in your Canadian passport to get to get a free beer. And people all over the world, non-Canadians included, yeah, started to sing the national anthem. I'm um, sure. but be beautifully on brand. So those are the types of collective experiences, everything from this young woman who lets you into her bathroom to beauty rest and Molson beer fridges and, and Volkswagen piano stairs. Um, you know, it's, it's for your brand. How can you create these collective experiences? And see, I'm so busy looking at the camera these days. I can't see any of the comments coming in. Yeah. I, but. oh, okay. Let me, let me, um, Ellen says, let me turn off this and put some of these questions up here. Um, I like your impression, Tony. I wonder, I wonder, huh? I don't know what you wonder. Tell us. Um, and, Sarah says, wow, that's really quite intimate, but a sweet idea. Okay, I'm guessing, Sarah, that you meant the bathroom. bathroom. Oh, oh, the bathroom. Oh, the bathroom. I was on the bathroom. Yeah. Um, it, it is interesting because I, I always look at, you know, what big brands do, and then you say, okay, how can you do that within your own? But really what they're doing, like you're saying, is creating shared experiences, um, the ritual part of it, but also – what Lisa does so well in her bathroom and on their show is she speaks not at her audience. She's, she's having conversations with them. Like she knows. Yeah. And that's why I thought I go back to those questions going, what do we need to know about? And not just, I'm looking at it going both ways. What do I want my audience to know about me beyond the brand stuff and then what do I want to um, know about them so that I can speak to them better and have you know a, a closer relationship and I think I think going I think video to me uh, I you know me I'm always touting video the power of video but I I think video is such a powerful tool to be able to go get more intimate and then the right. fact that now we can see you know Ellen and Sarah and Bob's comments questions and bring them into a conversation I think that is getting really close like you know to face to face and I and I also think that if you, if if we look back at some of the examples we shared so the beauty rest example right what brought those people together was not a shared love for beauty rest what brought those people together was a shared love for the music Right. And so if we can find something uh, a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago, I talked about hitching a ride. What can what can you find that your customers that your ideal customers that brings them together, a value that brings them together or a love or an interest that brings them together? Uh, there was another brand and I'm going to forget the name of it, but they they have cycle. Uh, they, they do clothing uh, for cycling. And uh, they created events where everybody came together. And I, many people watching are probably too young to remember Saturn, but the, the car Saturn for years, right? And if you were a wow. Saturn owner and I had a Saturn, I never went to their picnics, but they had an annual barbecue, yeah. and, right. right? So it's not just the well, brand. Look at a Harley Davidson. I mean, right. you're, you're a hog, you're a, the Harley owners group. And, yeah. and they would, you know, they, they have all these big events. If you're a, if you're a Harley owner that you belong to that group, you know, it's right. interesting because, um, another feature that's interesting they just rolled out on Be Live is a watch party, they call it. And the ability to have a video, like maybe you find an inspiring video, or maybe you find a music, a concert, you can play that and have a watch party virtually with your audience and then talk about it. And Oh, how cool. So there might be something virtually that you could do using mm -hmm. tools like this to create some sort of experience, yeah. Wow, that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, I'm gonna. I need to find the right. You know, you've got to find a video that your audience would be interested in. But then you could gather for a, a virtual party, like a TED Talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do a, show a TED Talk. Yeah, and then and then talk about it. And oh, I you're gonna have to teach me how to or us how to use that feature yeah. because I think that's really cool. cool. Yeah, really, so really cool. There's there's now some tools that I think are out there that we could do things if if it had to be virtual. Obviously, if you could do it in a bringing people together physically, that would be ideal. Right. Um, I mean, I look at it and go, since we bought this house in Arizona, going, 
I think I need to find a way to turn this into some sort of retreat um, place where you come together and share an experience and create some experience. But that's not unique. You know, that's that happens all the time. So yeah, but it, would, it depends on I mean, we've done that with our place up north, too. But it totally depends on what the experience is. Right. 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 If you're creating a unique experience once people are there, it, that then that makes it unique in itself. Right. 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 So so I, I it's interesting when I started Influential Innovators, um, I always ask the question when people join, what uh, what can the group what kind of value can the group provide? And somebody said getting together face to face uh, and we haven't done it yet, but um, we may we may need to have an influential innovators like Montreal Hangout and, a, you know, well, an Arizona Hangout or whatever and see how many people how many people show up. So that would be really cool. And Bob, I'm going to try this watch party on Monday. I think in the Q and A um, session, I'm going to find a video that applies and and do this on Monday. Um, it's interesting that you say the you know uh, getting together. That's what tweet ups. Remember when Twitter first? Yeah, tweet -ups? yeah, yeah. And everybody had tweet ups, which were just hey, let's all meet here, but you coordinated it through Twitter. Yeah. So you know maybe we need to even revisit that concept of are we taking the opportunity to meet physically with people that we connect with virtually or our, our customers, you know, making that intention to gather once a year or something physically. Right. So yeah. We'll yeah. Great uh, idea. Great. So, great yeah, idea. So I'd love to hear everyone else's ideas, you know, throw them in the chat so that we have them. We have a record of them. And as people are watching the replay, even to add those comments in here, how can you create a more intimate or close feeling or building that sense of community and belonging with, with your, yeah, that sense of yeah, belonging. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. You know, brainstorm here. Let's throw out some, yeah. some ideas, but, um, but it is 12 30. It's well here. 1130. 11.30 for Bob, it's 1.30. For me, it's 2.30. For me, Len, it's 2.30. But um, our, our, 30, our 30 minutes is up. It's wine 30 somewhere. It's wine 30 somewhere. <laughs> so have a great weekend, everybody. Gina, as always, yes. such an, a, an amazing treat to hang out with you and to hang out with everybody who uh, – who, who connects and comes in to watch us and hopefully have some yeah. kind of collective experience. You well, and I are having conversations and hopefully we can get people involved. And I, I that, want everyone to know that's watching, like we so love having you here. Yeah. And not that I don't love chatting with Tony, just her and I, but like we love this um, collaborative environment right here where you yes, guys can absolutely throw out your comments. And so we appreciate you. Okay, have a great weekend, everybody, and we will see you next week. You up, can you feel the love tonight music right now? Yeah. <laughs> you guys need to sing for me. Can you feel the love tonight? Okay, and on, on that, that note, no pun intended. On that off note, have on a great weekend. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye.